every Monday at 9 p.m. We come to you in your living room. You might be stuck in traffic jam, going home, watching us via our social media platforms, our website live and our Church of Uganda Family TV app. Uh, but wherever you're watching us from, thank you so much for choosing Church of Uganda Family TV. This is the Flourishing Hub with me, Edrin Austin Mukalazi. Flourishing Hub is a program that is centered around improving your mindset as a young person so that you can thrive through the hard economy, through a lot of trials in this world now. Young and Flourishing Foundation brings us the Flourishing Hub. Young and Flourishing is built on four pillars and one of these pillars is that that particular one we always want to hear money money but if you lack financial uh, discipline then you will work but at the end of the day you will gain nothing so what does young and flourishing do young and flourishing teaches you how to work how to save but after saving the chain is only complete if you invest the savings so that they can bring you more Profits. So that is what Young and Flourishing does. The second pillar is daring. In life, you need to, to, to venture into the various opportunities. Why? Because that which starts as a humble business, uh, that which starts as an idea, will later become a world-class business. So daring is really very important and then the third pillar is of course mentorship we all need mentors that is why every monday at 9 p.m we bring here people who are partly mentoring us they speak to us because they are doing what we want to do as young people they have been uh, where we want to be that is why it is very important for you to embrace mentors. Now, mentorship is another pillar. So Young and Flourishing Foundation offers you this pillar. And the last pillar is strategy. We know this month is ending tomorrow. So Wednesday will be March. But even as we end February, uh, do, you have the, uh, do you have an evaluation list? Did you have a plan for February that you're going to uh, tick and and look through and see what you've achieved and what you've, you've not achieved and then um, uh, we also uh, after March we shall be closing the first quarter but will you do you have that plan for the first quarter that will help you evaluate yourself your strength your weaknesses your you know all that so it is very important to be strategic because if you don't have a plan you'll always be in other people's plans now today we are here to still talk about daring in life and what we have to say this evening is dream big how do you dream big that is what we are going to talk about but with us is uh, one of uh, the people who are not new here you know this is one of us he has always come each time we get to him he says yeah i'll come and even today, he has come to close up the year for us. Uh, sorry, the month for us uh, as Flourishing Hub. So we have Dr. Rumanzi Benita Rushari, who is the director of Africa Population Institute. But he's also a mentor. And uh, to some of us, he mentors us. <laughs> I believe he's a mentor to you as well, Dr. Rumanzi. Yes. You're most welcome to Flourishing Hub this 27th day of February. Oh, thank you very much, Edwin Mukarazi. I'm glad to be here this evening. Mm -hmm. Good evening, viewers. Yeah, I'm here once again yeah. to give you the nuggets of truth sure. that concerns uh, human living, especially the youth in Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a passion to transform Africa as a continent. I feel bad when I see us every time we are the ones lagging behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one day I want us to shine and be able to do what others dare to do. So tonight's topic, dream big. I believe that you learn something. Sure, sure, sure. I, I'm already excited when it comes to dreaming big because very many people have dreams 
and I believe by the end of this program we shall know how dreaming big is because sometimes people have dreams but they're not even sure of those dreams so someone has this dream but they're not sure whether that dream will ever come to pass and uh, you know things with dreams are, are so funny uh, that is another mystery that we are going to talk about so uh, maybe to start from where it all starts what is a dream yeah uh, thank you edwin uh, a dream i can define it in three uh, different nuggets first and foremost a dream is a series of thoughts and images and the sensations that someone gets when they are asleep. But there is also, it, uh, it can also be defined as cherished and aspirations or ambitions uh, of an individual when they have an idea. And finally, it can also be an indulgence and fantasies that you have where you desire to be or of something that you desire to achieve in life. So all that can define uh, what a dream is. So it depends on which definition you pick <laughs> on tonight, but at the end of it all, it is the fantasy, the imagination, and the sensation that, and the ambition where you want to be and what you want to achieve in life. So you, you've given us three definitions, and mm. all these definitions have no relationship. Each definition is on its own. For example, the first one, mm. uh, a series of images, and you know that we get when we sleep. Yes. And uh, very many people have can have such images. For instance, when they are CEOs, when they are, you know, MDs, and and then we also have the cherished uh, and aspirations that you've talked about of an individual, you know, uh, when someone sits back and they, you know, they, they start imagining, they start seeing a lot of things, you know, something that drives their passion. Uh, for example, you said that your passion, you, you have a passion yes. to transform Africa, Africa, and that is your dream. Mm. And then the other, and this is a, a fantasy. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, which dream specifically is, is in line with transformation? especially in this uh, journey, in this work of yeah. transforming Africa and the youths of Africa? Okay, you know that what you cannot do what you have never thought about. Mm. And it is written in the Bible that as a man thinketh, so he is. Mm. So what you have never imagined, you can't do it. So for this case, I would say, don't hold yourself back. Always know that you can do something. Mm. And by thinking so, then you are dreaming. Mm. You are dreaming about it. And when you dream about it, then you can achieve it. So you first get it in your mind as a concept, you conceptualize it, and then you put it out in reality. So don't be afraid of the space between your dream and reality. Mm. If you can dream, you can make it happen. Okay. All you need is an idea. As long as it is generated in your mind, then you can do it. So dream big, stay positive, work hard, and enjoy the journey throughout. Mm. So that is all about dreaming that dreaming. we are talking about tonight. Now we are talking about dreaming big. Do I choose the, the, the size of the dream or it comes just automatic? And you know, one, one time I go to sleep... I get this dream and then I put it in my mind. I now work towards it. Yeah, uh, it is always a good strategy to always have a notebook wherever you are. You can even dream when you are not sleeping. There is what we call a trance. Something mm. crosses your mind yeah. and then you understand, yes, this is an idea that has just come. Mm. A case of reference of recent, I was uh, traveling. Uh, connecting between the two states and I was uh, on freight and when I was up there maybe 35,000 feet above the sea level I just got like an idea very soon I'm going to for the Population Association of America mm -hmm. then I was like why can't we have the Population Association of, you, of Africa here in Africa mm -hmm. so that is just an idea that crossed in my mind I was not sleeping mm -hmm. but I dreamt about it and right now, I'm working towards realizing it. Mm -hmm. So, 
that is the reason why you have to let your actions be louder than your words. If you are a dreamer, then don't just talk about it, mm. but let your actions be streamlined. Uh, and there, it will take away your fears. Because in most cases, people fear to begin. But if you can begin it, then you can have it. So if you don't build your dream, mm. someone else will hire you to build theirs. OK. Yeah, if you don't, uh, if you dream about something and you just procrastinate, you don't mm -hmm. do anything about it, very soon you'll hear someone else doing it and then you regret and say, oh, I had thought about that thing, but I never had a chance to do it, to do it, simply because you waited. Mm -hmm. In my uh, language, they say, if you wait for long, <laughs> You have to, <laughs> for, for the animal to get out of the bush, you and, end and, up piercing the, the tail. In Luganda, it is interpreted as a nindiriza. Mm. Eh? No. Mm. Uh, I, uh, I'm forgetting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but that is it. it. Yeah. You end up piercing the nail. Yes. The, 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 the tail. Yes. So all our dreams come true if we have courage to pursue them. Actually, it is Linda Chigweyo Yafumita Muchira. Uh -huh. I remember that. Linda Chigweyo Yafumita Muchira. <laughs> yes. So, yes. So, uh, surround yourself mm. with the people mm. who believe in your dream. Because uh, you can't achieve much as an individual, mm. but you have to have people who believe in you. Okay. Uh, a case of reference, like if you say you wanted to study, uh, your dream was to graduate. Uh, if your parents never supported you, all the guardians, mm. you couldn't realize that dream. Mm. So it is go always good to be in that circle mm. of people who believe in you. Uh, and this is an advice to the parents. The parents will usually shatter the dreams of the, uh, of the children by telling them, you can't do this, you will never amount into anything. Mm. I've had uh, like a place where I stay, I always move and see people talking very bad words to the children. Because I believe that a tongue a, a creates. Yeah. If you, you talk about something, then you are literally creating it. Exactly. And especially to the child mm. who believes in you and who trusts in you. So please, don't downgrade your dream to fit your reality. Mm. Upgrade your, connect, uh, uh, your commission to match your destiny. Always mm. work hard to make sure that you realize your dream. Because the dream killers are very many. Mm. Actually, we shall get to the dream killers, mm. but uh, in line with, with dreaming, and uh, you talked about, I, I know that Africa Population Institute was a dream, and it is now in place. And you've also talked about the, uh, popul the Africa Population Association, which you're working on, and very many other dreams mm. that you had as, as a young man, as you are growing up. Mm. So, to what extent have you achieved your dreams? Yeah, uh, what started as a dream, I now see it as a reality. Uh, it so started uh, when, we were, when we had graduated at the university. And uh, you know, you go around thinking you're going to get this big job because I was a youth winger. Being a youth winger, you're helping the politicians to thrive. <laughs> and they call you, you sit in their comfortable cool cars. Hey. They drive you long distances. <laughs> You eat the best when you are with them. So I thought the moment I graduate from the university, I'm going now to be given probably a big office. <laughs> <laughs> I was aspiring to work mm. uh, in the Bank of Uganda mm. because I was a rural economist. Mm. And uh, it so happened that the moment I completed and I came out of the university, now these people knew that I, I no longer have a platform where I can either credit them or discredit them. So the first call I made to the person that I really took as a mentor, he turned it down. I took time and went to his office to meet him. And he was like telling me, you know what, you have to first go to up country, wait for your results to come. And when your results come, that's when you're going to do it, to get a job. Then I feared going back to the village and I was like, now how will I come back to Kampara? <laughs> will my father give me back transport? Mm. But 
ideally what i'm trying to talk about is that as far as your eyes can see then you can have it mm. then i joined i went to uh, changwanzi you know this uh, yeah. training uh, mm. uh, kada, kada training i was like yes when i come out from there now i'm going to find a job all i wanted was i was questioning for a job but as i sat with the men and women of kaliba trying to talk to them i needed a job i realized that what they were offering was not worth what i was so i said no look here let me make this decision i'm going back for a master's degree and this time it was very intentional that if i do this master's degree uh, this is what i want to become mm. so I, i never went for a master's to look for a job now and as i began a master's degree that's when now people realized the value that i had and i was called here and there to do research and the like and i realized yes you can do much uh, when you are not constrained in one place mm because now I was very much uh, uh, I, I, I used to do a lot of stuff so that's how my dream came I said yes I can help the young people who are looking for jobs uh, I can give them hands-on experience uh, the skills that they need instead of them looking for jobs they can do something manual as jobs are coming mm. and that's how we started I used to see uh, every advert was we need someone who has uh, monitoring and no <laughs> monitoring and evaluation skills mm. we need someone who has project planning skills we need someone with uh, it is another advantage to have finance uh, management skills so i said no i can sit down with a team of young people and we come up with these modules we developed very fantastic modules which we actually utilized and we would advertise at Makere and other institutions of higher learning and people would come and we train them and those that we trained i want to tell you Adrian when you meet them they are different because we told them the reason that why they went to school was not just to look for a job mm. but was to add value on the status quo of what needs to be done mm. in this country So most of them are business owners right now, very big entrepreneurs, and, and they are doing well. Much as some of them are employed, but you find that he's employed somewhere, mm -hmm. but again, he's doing something for himself. And that's how I would say all successful men and women, they, big, they, they, they dream big, or they are big dreamers. Mm -hmm. So they imagine what the future could be and they work day and night and towards achieving that dream now as you dream big mm -hmm. and as you work towards achieving and uh, you know realizing what society might not be embracing at a particular moment you as dr romanzi what are you doing different Okay, uh, thank you, Edwin. Mm. The last time I was on this set, I told you that the difference between a rich man and a poor man is an idea. Mm. When an idea comes to you, all you need to do is sit down and decode it and mm. encode it again and know exactly how to realize that dream. So think about the desired future like the third definition of the dream was the fantasies mm. yeah. of the desired future. Mm. This one I learned it from network from those people who do network marketing. They come and tell you to what extent you can <laughs> achieve much in the shortest time possible. And for that case you say no. How do you achieve it without working? Mm. You know the Bible is very clear. It tells us that God blesses the works of our hands. Our hands. So meaning if you are not doing anything you don't expect a God blessing has nothing to bless from God mm. so never fear to fall take actions with love and work hard so whatever you think about just know that it is God is giving you a vision mm. which you can decode and encode and come up with something that can help the society mm. 
So again, I cannot forget to tell the person watching us tonight yeah. that um, you cannot have what you have not thought about. Mm -hmm. uh, I will give an example. Uh, like in my village where I come from, everyone who was building a perimeter wall fence was using these small bricks. Eh? Uh, and uh, small bricks, then you plaster them and do the same. But I just got a chance and I'm like, no, how can I do it different? I said, me, let me build my perimeter wall fence using nine, nine bricks. Eh? Mm. And uh, people from my place are literally very rich. I come from a place called Mohanga and people have money. What they don't know is what they can't do. Mm. But as long as they know it, they can do it with the money because they have all the resources. Yeah, I salute uh, my cousin brother, Aponye. Uh, I mean, he's our mentor. We have mm. looked up to him and what he's doing in the village. And everyone is looking at him. So right now, as I talk, everyone who is building a perimeter wall fence is using nine. nine, nine. Simply because it is very beautiful mm. and probably it is beautiful more yeah. durable yeah. and it is e even easier to be done so a dream that you dream alone is only a dream but if you dream together is a reality so you realize that very many people come on and join you and you're doing something so right now i can say our place is transformed mm. it is transformed because of an idea that i got i so, think you need to, to draw much light on this because one of the problems we are having in Africa is that when you come up with an idea, you own it and you can't share it with anybody. You don't even want anybody to do anything similar to what you're doing. Like you want to be in your own island with what you have. No, that one will take you far if you can't mingle with other people. Like I said at the beginning that uh, you need people to help you build your dream because you can't build it alone even if you are a CEO a CEO will not go into micromanagement mm. you will have other people whom you work through to achieve what you want to do so as a good manager you should work through others as a good manager you work through others not like you are exploiting them but you can uh, execute your mission through them mm. so as far as uh, you, you, there, there is a saying, there is a saying that I love. They say, aim at the moon. If you miss the moon, you will land among the stars. You've seen that, eh? Mm. So, as someone who wants to reach further, you need to aim at great stuff. That's what we call dream big. Mm. And then if you miss to hit the moon, then the stars are too many, maybe your arrow may what? Shoot one of them. So whatever you can dream, you can begin it, and boldness or has genius, power, and magic in it. So your boldness will help you achieve much more than if you were fearful and timid. So that's why I encourage uh, uh, people, like as Christians, we believe that God, Jehovah, is Jehovah Jireh, eh? Jehovah the provider. So everything that we think of, we expect God to provide. And surely he does. Sure. He does provide. Mm -hmm. If you think of it, he can provide to you and then you are able to achieve. Mm -hmm. So dreams should be bigger than your doubts. In most cases, people doubt. You're like, uh, you know, there is what we call wakareba. Wakareba mm. is like uh, playing gambling. Eh? <laughs> if you put here, you win. If you put here, you lose. Eh? But I want to tell you that high-risk ventures... Uh, actually, in some, in some markets, they call it Yanyaka Lengede. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, what, uh, what you do determines where you want to go. Yeah. Because if you don't do it right now, Somewhere, someone else will do it and will take over what belongs to you. Mm. So the secret of my success, that's what you asked. Yes. Uh, I, 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 I don't compare myself with anyone and I don't compete with anyone because I believe that I'm different 
as the Bible says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. I believe that in this world, I have my own space, mm. which I must occupy. If I don't occupy that space, no one else will. That's why I must make sure I am available mm. at every opportunity that is given to me. Mm. I am available to do my best. Because you never know it could be your last day on earth. Mm. And if you went without doing it, which account would you give <laughs> to God? So uh, great leaders, they have courage mm. to fulfill their vision and they have that passion. They are not looking for just positions. Mm. Uh, I, I love what our president said that for him, he earns only how much? 30 million. Less than that. But uh, there are people who earn 50 million, mm. 80 million, mm. and uh, how many millions? But he's the president. So being the president, he's a great leader who has, it is not about just the position, but it is the authority that is behind that position. Mm. So I love that when he said it. Uh, and and I, w I don't want to be pushed around by fears in the mind. And I want to be led by the dream of the heart. So the heart is, is, is where these thoughts generate from. Mm. You know, they say that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. And now talking about the idle mind, uh, the idle mind being the devil's workshop. I know that as Christians, we have a purpose, mm -hmm. that, uh, which purpose we have to serve mm -hmm. as we are still here. Like you said earlier, that what if you're dying the next day mm -hmm. when you've not fulfilled that purpose? As an individual, you have a purpose on earth. So there is that assignment that God gave you that you need to fulfill. Now, all, now, note that everyone's assignment is to be a preacher in church. You have your assignment that you're supposed to fulfill wherever you are. It could be in business, it could be in mentorship, you know, it could be anywhere. But very many of us as Christians, uh, we tend to, to exclude ourselves in the in the in the trends you know when we see people building businesses we exclude ourselves ah huh? those are that those are for the secular uh for the secular uh community but as christians we are supposed to take up our positions now how do we take up our positions uh we are you're watching flourishing hub flourishing hub brought you by young and flourishing network and we are with dr Romanzi benta who is uh, the director of africa population institute and he will soon be the director of africa population association <laughs> population association hey, of africa population association of africa yeah. now doctor mm -hmm. uh, we are back and before the commercial break uh, we had in we had started on something you know uh, like i said earlier that as christians we limit ourselves I don't know whether it is because of the limited biblical knowledge that we have that we tend to misinterpret scriptures and we think some of these things really don't matter to us so they should be left to the secular uh, world. So how do Christians take uh, their positions when it comes to dreaming big? Yeah, uh, literature has it that um, if Christians would pray like Muslims do. Mm. That is five times a day. Eh? Yeah. They mean wonders. They would make wonders. Because the Christians have the authority as believers mm. and they have power through the word of God which happens to be the Bible. And this is Church of Uganda Family TV mm. and I believe that those who are watching us majority are Christians yeah. and they need to listen to this bitter truth mm. the bitter truth is that uh, as Christians we have tended to relax and we have left the business sector to the secular world mm. or to other beliefs it so happened that if you want to do anything that needs that anything technical from construction of buildings to the whatever you do you will find the names of the people who do it 
You want someone who does tarazo is Abdul. You want someone who does uh, the roofing Ahmed. is Ahmed. You need someone who can do the plumbing of the house is maybe Sharif. <laughs> I mean, those are the names. And you wonder where are Christians? <laughs> what are we doing? Where are our children? Let me tell you, these other beliefs, they teach their children how to work. And I would love Christians who are watching us tonight to wake up from the sleep before it is too late and take over what belongs to them. In this case, let our children get vocational trainings. Let our children get hands-on experience. Do you know that even these, the graves which are made in the villages, eh? the grave of the Christians are built by... <laughs> So I just need uh, people to wake up mm. and know that surely these are the things we have uh, abandoned. Yeah. But they are very helpful. Mm. I mean, look right now, there are no jobs. Mm. Uh, every year, more than 20,000 uh, join the labor market. Yeah. And that's why we are exporting much labor to the Middle East. Mm. It's simply because people here are just learning to survive. But they are not getting the skills that can solve the problem. So if you are dreaming big, then you think of the solutions to the problems. So today I put on my status, uh, social uh, media status, that we are global, we position ourselves for global solutions as global solution givers. So if you are a global solution giver, let me tell you, you will never be broke. You will never be poor. Because every solution that you give will pay you back. So great leaders, please be courageous. And know that when you are dreaming big, dream on what you can do, what others are not doing, instead of becoming copycats. So uh, the, the dream is not what you see while asleep. It's not only, let me use that word, not only what you see when you are asleep. But the dream is the thing which does not let you sleep. If you have a dream and you are chasing it, you can't be in your, comf in your, in your comfort zone until you realize it, until you achieve it. If you wake up right now and say, probably I want to start a school, and this is why I want it to go, and this is what I want it to be, then you need to put in more hours of work than when you are resting and sleeping. So you can start small and act now. Start small and act now and build on it. Give it your very best of time and you realize it. Okay. So they say that uh, I dream big. The people I work with, they always say, ah, man, you dream big, you are just over ambitious. But I say, I say to them that they, they, they just think small. Because if I am to do something, I can see it even before I do it. And I told you that the, it is my father who taught me this. Uh, whenever we would move and he tells me here there is something and mm. then I don't see it with mm. my eyes. But tomorrow when we come, you see it. Eh? Then I learned that everything has to be mental first. So tonight we need to, uh, to focus on uh, changing someone's mentality. Yes. Someone who is thinking uh, of one thing tonight should have a diversity of many things by the end of this talk show tonight. Sure. So the power of positive thinking is far much more than uh, a bulldozer. Eh? You know a bulldozer yeah. can put this building down. Sure. However much you took a lot of time to put it up. Mm. But if you bring a bulldozer, it will put it up. But positive thinking does the same. Whatever you see before you as a mountain, it can only be moved. You know, even Jesus said it, that if your faith is small as a mustard seed, eh? a green of a mustard seed, mm -hmm. it can, you can tell the mountain move. 
and, and it falls into the yeah. sea. Eh? So in that case, we need to know that uh, you can imagine it and definitely you will have it. And that is when you build on your faith. Okay. So uh, you ask as a Christian, so the Bible tells us that God blesses the works of our hands. I, told, I talked about that. Yes. But if he is to bless your works, let's invest more time in, in seeking the wisdom and the truth in his word. You see that? Rather than just praying and believing God for a miracle. Yes, I can go and sow my seed today and then tomorrow I expect a harvest. Mm. But simply because I sowed my seed, I had to go and work in order to get to realize the what? The blessing. The blessing. There is a time when we are celebrating someone's life in this country, a very great man, and we are celebrating his life. And uh, people gave. Uh, things they were giving and at that time I gave a bull and the bull was 900,000 Uganda shillings then I realized but I've sown a bull I've sown a cow so how will I be blessed how will I get the cows so I went to the village and I bought only two heads of cows mm. eh? and right now as I talk to you I am a farmer I have cows that have originated from those two Mm. Simply because, meaning that my seed went into a fertile ground. And it brought the multiplication. And it brought the multiplication. But if I had sown that bull and I just waited for a miracle, <laughs> probably I wouldn't be having a cow right now and I would be saying that the land I sowed my bull was infertile. So, uh, talking, about, uh, talking about sowing mm. and, and reaping and how God blesses uh, the works of our hands, mm. So, uh, what are some of the secrets of uh, great leaders who, who have dreamed big and have really lived these dreams? Yeah, uh, great leaders uh, that we, we have seen. Mm. Uh, I would begin with this quotation that a journey of a thousand miles begins with just a step. Mm. So, the great leaders that you see today they began very small. We do talk about our president. Maybe our president is my role model. Sure. Talk about him. Someone who started with 27 young men and they went to the bush. Mm. Eh? At that time, surely someone would even say, think that he was insane. <laughs> because how can you think that 27 can overthrow a government? Eh? Someone would think that probably he was, he was out of his mind. Mm. But... He was very persistent yeah. and he was very consistent mm -hmm. on what he was doing. Mm -hmm. eh? And right now, everyone looks at him as a great leader, sure. but you don't know where he has passed. Mm -hmm. I have had people who say, I want a double portion of uh, someone's anointing. Yeah. <laughs> but if you want a, a double portion of someone's anointing, you need to know what someone has gone through. Mm -hmm. The sacrifice they have the sacrifices given. They have given. Eh? to reach that level where they are. So if Elisha managed to get the anointing uh, Elijah. from Elijah, mm. the man went through a lot. True. Do you know he was a farmer? He had to slaughter all the oxen that he was using to plow. Mm. And he used those pulled implements they were using to burn them and roast them. Probably he gave the meat for free mm. to people and they ate it. And that was a great and huge sacrifice. But still, because of that sacrifice, you almost also missed the what? The anointing. Mm. But Elijah told him that if you see me go, mm. that's when you'll have it. And a man had to stay awake <laughs> days and nights, no sleep, eh? thinking about what do I do? Mm. Eh? How, do I, see How do I see him go? Mm. And here, they went to Girigo, he's following. They went to where, he's following. They went, I mean, until when the man was taken by a whirlwind. And that's when he received the double portion of the anointing. Yeah. So young men and women watching us tonight, don't desire to be like other people. Just know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you can begin as an individual and do something that can change 
your generation all the people around you you can be the first in your family to do so and in most cases we always get resistances from the family yes. especially the people you are born with if you try to do something different from what they know or what they have been doing before to be honest they will fight you and they'll give you deadline they will try to pull you down but if you're consistent and persistent mm. surely you realize your your dream true i mean people always ask you who do you think you are yeah when joseph was a dreamer <laughs> in the bible <laughs> i mean his siblings are the ones who literally put him down including his parents yeah. the father said do you think me and your mother are going to bow down uh, for you eh? and the father was literally putting that dream killing mm. that dream but the guy persisted so the men uh, uh, let me use an example the men who built america mm. if you have watched those series of yeah. movies the yeah. men who built america those were great men they were dreamers they had the ability to see beyond the mountains they had the ability to see beyond the future which we haven't even realized right now That's why they had to write their constitution and seal it never to change because they knew that the generation that would come later on would probably not see or have the vision like they do they had so they had to put in position mechanisms that will make America great mm. and for generations to come and we have seen it probably right now China is coming up and we don't know what they are doing but uh, america it has stood the test of what Time. times mm. so uh when i was uh, in senior four uh there is someone who gave me a success card and on that success card it had these three words that determination plus hard work minus leg- laziness is equal to success <laughs> so i believe really the person who wrote this thought about it for sure if you are determined and you work harder success is inevitable if you are not lazy you know this laziness here the bible condemns it so much yes. it says that a little sleep or slumber makes poverty come in like what an armed mm. robber mm. So in that I would look at the young man and woman watching us tonight and tell him please reduce your sleep. <laughs> eh? If you have been sleeping for 12 hours uh, make it at least 8 and then you keep on going slowly slowly reducing it. You know they say it is it is hard to someone to stop smoking all of a sudden. Yeah. But if he was smoking a packet of cigarette mm. he can now reduce it maybe to two sticks mm. and later on to one stick and maybe later they quit smoking mm. so likewise someone who has been sleeping uh, you, you do it like that person who, has, who had an addiction start slowly wake up in the middle of the night arise in the middle of the watches get a pen get a paper write down what you think whatever you think about and later on tomorrow when you are sober or when you are uh, your mind is clear try to see what you wrote and then try to decode it what i said it is encoding and decoding and then come up with a vision and a dream and a goal that you want to achieve and even the bible talks about uh, this in habakkuk mm. that write your vision mm. down so that whoever reads it can just run away yes write your vision down if you don't write it i'm telling you soon you forget it yeah, yeah if you don't put it on a paper you will soon forget it mm. because once it comes to you you are, it is very strong on you and you can memorize it very well and clearly but as time goes on that <laughs> the memory fades keep on, it will keep on evaporating <laughs> and it will go on so if people uh, never did silly things nothing intelligent would ev- uh, would ever get done mm. uh, so people 
uh, there is something I read about, uh, was it Martin King, Martin Luther, the King Jr., someone who said that, uh, that uh, the world is not destroyed by bad people, yeah. but it is, it is destroyed by good people who know what to do, but they <laughs> don't do it. That or they like, keep it to themselves. That's actually Martin Luther King Jr. So, uh, you, you, if you think about it and you just say, oh, someone else will mm. do it, mm. or oh, someone else will do it, <laughs> eh? I don't, that is, uh, and I don't care attitude, mm. and that is to whom it may concern. Even you see it among the children when they are growing. Mm. If you want to know a child who will become a great leader, is a child who takes responsibility. Mm. Like maybe after eating, a child is able to gather the plates and put them together. But another one, after eating, he just leaves the plate there. Maybe just remove the socks and drops them wherever they want to drop them. Another one has the audacity to pick them and put them where they belong. So uh, that, that, that's the ability to know that if I don't do it, if I don't do my part, I'm sure no one else can do it. Because me, I've learned that what I am meant to do, it's only me who can do it. Not because I don't trust other people. But as a leader, I work through others. And working through them, I instigate them, please do this and do this and don't do that. But I am guiding them. So I cannot just sleep and expect everything to be swift. True. I have to actively participate. So as someone who dreams bigger, I wouldn't want anyone to uh, tamper with what I'm doing. Yes, there are many forces which fight you when you are dreaming big. Mm. Yeah, there are those who pull you back. I gave, I gave an example of Joseph. Yeah. Uh, the par uh, siblings pulling him down and the parent. Uh, what? But at the end of it all, it becomes with self-motivation. That's why people, when they are looking for someone to employ, they, what they always put in the core for job, they always say, uh, we need someone who is self-motivated mm. and can work under minimum mm. supervision. Eh? Mm. Can work under minimum supervision. supervision. No one wants to tell you, Edwin, do A, B, C, D, <laughs> and then he comes and helps you how to do it. No. And then they remind you the other they day. They remind you the, the other day, day, every now and then. No. We need to encourage young people that you need to take responsibility. Don't say someone else will do it. Mm. Like Abraham Lincoln said, don't ask America what America can do for you, mm. but ask yourself what you can do for America. In this context, we are Africans. Yeah. Don't ask Africans what, or Africa what it can do for you, mm. but ask yourself what you can do for Africa. Mm. And our leaders, what they are doing, I mean, it, it is high time we realize that we can actually develop this continent ourselves. I, I love what uh, the late Magufuli was doing yeah. in Tanzania. In Tanzania, the country moved from uh, a low-income country to a middle-income country within a span of less than five years yeah. of his tenure in office. Yeah. So what did he do different than other leaders who preceded him were not doing? Mm. Can we borrow a leaf from what he did? Can we have a documentary about him Eh? what he did not, I, I love this song that the young man sang about him but can we do can we have him as a case study mm. in our schools mm. and we learn from him and from there he can still mentor as many as he can even, much his, uh, even when he's much long gone True. yes so we need people who can put that into writing mm -hmm. yeah. now as we come to the close of this show what are your parting shots especially to the young people uh, you talked about laziness and you condemned laziness and the bible condemns laziness everyone condemns laziness no one would really want to work with a lazy person and you know we are in a season where it rains almost every morning in the, uh, in the hours where you're supposed to <laughs> go for work. To get out of the bed. Uh, to get out of the bed and then you're like, ah, ah, 
I'll cover myself. Mm. And then, you know, so you realize that some people are not even, some young people are not even serious with the jobs they have, but they, they still have this dream of being entrepreneurs, of being CEOs, yet they don't even take the jobs they have serious. They are so lazy. What advice do you have for them? Okay. Uh, first and foremost, I want to, I, uh, I had and talked about the flourishing hub. Like you said, that flourishing hub, we have four pillars. Mm. You mentioned them, money, mentorship, daring, and strategy. And strategy. Mm. So for that case, as young men and women, or young people who aspire to become great leaders, or who aspire to do things differently, or who aspire who, who dream bigger to make sure that they transform their communities mm. and their generations. Mm. Please, these are two that I will leave with you. Never proc procrastinate. If God gives you a dream you, and you hesitate to do it, anyone else will do it. So make sure that you do it yourself. There is a saying when he said that when a, when the triumphant entry in Jerusalem mm. uh, and, and uh, people were shouting and saying, heal, heal, heal Jesus. And he, he told, and the people were saying, please tell your people to stop shouting. Then he told them that if I tell them, if they keep quiet, then the stones will even what? Shout. Sure. So please never exchange your position for anything else. Never allow anyone to be in your position simply because you are lazy or you have failed to take it on the responsibility. It's high time every youth in Africa knows that they have a contribution that they can do to this continent. So I would also borrow a leaf from, uh, uh, today I watched a, a, a clip about uh, the secrets of the success for Singapore. Mm. Why Singapore is more successful. You know, in, in, in 1962, we used to even help what? Singapore. Singapore. Yes. As Uganda, mm. our per capita income was higher and our GDP was higher than Singapore. So in less than 50 years, Singapore is now a first class country. But I heard it from their president, what he was saying. He said that it is three things, three secrets that have helped Singapore to grow. One is meritocracy. For them, they employ someone based on merit. Mm. Not someone who knows whatever, or I know you, or related you know me, or related to me. No, it is a career open to those who are talented. Just like the days of Napoleon Bonaparte, that's what they have to do. Someone who is exhibits uh, serious traits and qualities, then he gets the best position. Then too, he talked about uh, paragamatism, and he gave an example of uh, two cats. He said that there is a cat, a white cat, and a black cat. But as long as that cat can catch a rat, you don't mind. All you need is a cat that what? that can catch a rat. Right. So here he was trying to talk about people with different ideologies. Mm. Ideologies saying someone is from which party or believes in this or which religion or which sect of the, uh, of the what. So he said as long as someone is able to do the work, that is most important. We don't look at the, the other difference of color and what. Mm. Then the last one, he talked about honesty. Honesty, he said, if Corruption is the number one killer of most projects and that happen here in not only in Uganda but in Africa. Mm. But he gave an example of someone who was a prime minister and he went on a holiday and when he came back he had gone with someone on a business trip and when he came back he was thrown into prison, into jail. And he said if when they saw that even the minister can be thrown into jail mm. then Everyone knew that corruption is wrong, and that's why they had to promote honesty. So, young people watching us tonight, please let's be global, let's position ourselves for global solutions. And I'm sure together we can.
transform the generations in Africa. Thank you very much, Flourishing Hub, for giving me this opportunity. Tonight. And thank you so much for coming in this evening amidst the harsh weather. We are grateful and we are grateful to you, our viewer who is watching us right now, who, are, who watched us from the beginning up to now. Edwin Austin Mukalazi is my name. We meet again next Monday on Flourishing Hub. God bless you.